This is a wild time for a lot of fantasy managers' teams. You've got injuries. You've lost players. The waivers have run, and you're trying to figure out what do you do in your leagues. We're going to answer some of your questions, give you a lot of players' names that in the second half of this year might break out, players that are dormant, they're asleep, but you're going to pick them up, and you're going to win a fantasy championship this year. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment on who you've lost. I've lost Brees. Who have you lost? And enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, October 26th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Hello there. Greetings. Nice to have you. Ride or die, some news to talk about. Second half sleepers on today's episode. That shall awaken for your fantasy team. And then uh, we'll preview the Thursday night game, which on paper yeah. has the uh, yeah. appearance appearance of a very enticing uh, matchup where Tom Brady gets to be angry on uh, in primetime. Yeah, I love watching him yell at his teammates, but I fully expect that tonight. Uh, did you hear? No, Tom Brady addressed that. What did he say? Because I heard he kind of. Uh, he said that usually when you see him shouting at the team, he's actually shouting at himself. Wait, did he really say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pro move. Um, listen, I, honey. <laughs> when I'm shouting, when I'm, sh <laughs> when I'm shouting at the kids, it's really I'm, just. I'm just shouting in the mirror, talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um. About all the things that you screwed up. <laughs> Listen, self <laughs> block better. <laughs> I uh, did you see Peyton Manning talk about? Oh no, it wasn't Manning. It was Warner. Kurt Warner came out and talked about like, like basically addressing Brady and Aaron Rodgers and just like guys, it's okay to walk away. Like <laughs> he, he basically oh, really, and it wasn't play based. It was based on the fact that these guys look tired. Mm -hmm and exhausted and like just done and i think part of it was even like like the game has changed football's changed sure. like even the expectations that you can have on your teammates can, it, these guys started so long ago like they don't practice the way they used to practice the accountability is different there's so many uh coaches even that are, are so player friendly like i you know the game passes you by in the interpersonal way like people were not born that are on brady's team that he's now addressing. Yes. Like, they're not even peers. I, I I feel like the broadcasters were talking about this with Mike McDaniel during the Dolphins' mm -hmm. primetime game, and they were, like, talking. It, it was it was really funny to hear. It was almost a, a backhanded compliment of how they were saying, well, he can connect with the players and the young kids. And it's like, why are you so old? Just stop it. Like, let the youth are coming. They will replace us all. They yeah just just that is it is inevitable that you will age out and it's you don't need and to it's talk okay. down about and it. it's okay oh connecting with the youth well, you just work on it go go on a urban dictionary read up learn some new words <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous uh, all right a shout out to the current megalobol leader which has changed oh my wait goodness. what the shark the shark is done uh, Bodogs is fourteen and zero with eleven hundred and fifty eight points. And leading the way in the Megala Bowl, if oh, you no. if you are new to this show, since the season began, the Megala Bowl is our uh, world record-setting largest fantasy football competition. It starts before every patent season. Patent pending. Patent pending. Uh, patent pending. <laughs> We're getting a patent on that. Ah. Can you patent a world record? That's like doubling up. Think no one can replace it once you patent it. <laughs> That's right. You can't even beat it. Uh, so, congratulations, Bodogs. Let's get into some ride or die. Ride or 
Ride or Die, presented by Chevrolet. Well, Damian Pierce, where, what did he hit? 117 total yards? So that you, is correct. You guys got that one right. Romeo Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs. No more Romeo Dobbs questions on this show, please. Well, the, so you're not playing him this week? No more questions <laughs> on the show. It was. The question was asked last week, double-digit fantasy points, and we, we almost got double-digit drops. Okay. Yeah, zero so it's points. almost as good. So I was the only one to not believe in Dobbs. Uh, Tom Brady, will he be a top six quarterback? Jason and I did not believe. Mike, you gave him the uh, thumbs up, and he gave, gave you him. the middle finger. <laughs> yeah, he he sure did. Both of them, really. Yeah, he double birded you. Yeah. He was the quarterback 21. So Brooksy in the house. The Deucers are here. We've got Papa Josh. We've got Judge Giamatti and Al Borland. Oh, yeah. And uh, the week eight <laughs> ride or die predictions. Um, he wants that to be the sitcom style catchphrase. Well, the, no, he doesn't want it already. Where is. the audience always claps when, at his first I, appearance. I feel like when he says, Oh yeah, we need a Yay! clap track. Yeah, we do need that. Yeah. It's oh, a little, yeah. yeah, we need the sitcom we, one of those. When you yes. go one of our live shows over this summer, that's you're making a point here. We had people who had the Brooks. Oh yeah. T-shirt that they had created. I know that I know it's done. It's locked in. Well, and a man with such vast wealth, there's nothing other than power to gain. Right. I mean, just getting more uh, control over the populace. I think he may run for office at some point. You know what we need? We need to just clip out one of his all yes and put that on our Ooh. on our boards here, so that even so we take the power. That's right. We oh, take the okay. power back. <laughs> and even if he misses a show, we could still give an all yeah. Um, except for he's never missed a show. I don't think. I don't know. Uh, week eight ride or die predictions, Brooksy. What do you got for us? All right, guys. Deontay Johnson, very disappointing so far. Can he be a top 30 wide receiver this week against the Eagles? I Ooh. am depressed about Deontay Johnson. You're not the only one. Because the tar like all of the like external target involvement, blah, blah, blahs. Five of say seven he should games. be better than this. Five of seven games with 10 plus targets. I yeah, think, he's on pace for 162 targets right now. But if you want to know, like... Yeah, his A dot is like nothing. Exactly. And his A dot was nothing with Big Ben. And, oh, the problem was Big Ben. That's just what, you know, that that's all Big Ben could throw. And now he did it with Trubisky, and now he's he's done it um, with Kenny Pickett. I will step in here and choose Die, because that is very on brand for me. I've, I've yeah. Uh, yeah, you've yeah. been a, a Deontay hater for a while he's been a Deontay I, hater that's I, too put, strong. I know I, I, I put it on it's not I have it's not, not strong I, enough. I do not hate Deontay Johnson I just have not been not a massive said. believer <laughs> of uh high-end fantasy production especially this year I've heard you question his character yeah <laughs> yeah um uh, I'm jumping in die <laughs> you know what I'll I'll uh oh, no it's on. not had no it is come not. on yeah. do it do it. Brad, Brad. I mean, can we move the line a little bit? No, no, no. Can no, we no, get top 35? No, no, no. I'll, sure. ride, I'll, no. ride, I'll ride. I'll ride top 35. Come on, Broncos country. <laughs> no, I'll ride top 35. I will well, still die. Yeah, I mean, if I'll you're still. Die. Are you riding, Jason? Nah. Okay, yeah, so top fine. 35, Brooks. Move we'll that give line. You, give you some margin for error uh, Alvin, against the elite corners of the Philadelphia yeah, Eagles. Yeah, I'm just hoping they have to throw the ball enough. You know what? Like, give him, you know, 13 targets? Maybe 18, 20, 25 <laughs> targets, 30 targets. He would need 20 plus. Just get in the end zone, Deontay. Yeah, it'll be Pickens. All right, Brooks, what do you got for the second prediction? All right, Alvin Kamara versus the Raiders. Will he score his first touchdown? Oh. I mean, I feel I like, like I'm like stupid this. to say ride on this. Betting on a touchdown? And we're, we're going to say rushing or receiving. He hasn't, That's fair. He hasn't found yeah. the end zone yet. Yeah, it, it, it is difficult, and – one of the things about the Raiders right now, if you adjust for schedule, they are terrible. Quarterbacks <laughs> terrible against wide receivers, terrible against tight ends, and they've been shutting down the run. Um, what if you of, don't adjust for schedule? Uh, the, then it's very similar. Okay. It's still terrible. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that they're shutting down the run or they're just allowing people to pass on them. That's fair. Um, I'm, I'm going to ride. I'm going to ride. I'm gonna, uh, look, Alvin Kamara is not getting through this season without touchdowns. This is not a good defense. It, it's a good matchup for the Saints. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to call it. Obviously, the odds are not in my favor because whenever you're trying to predict a touchdown, obviously if he if finishes the season with five or six touchdowns in 17 games, more often than not he doesn't. But I'm I'm a, I'm a believe. I'm I'm gonna listen to this Holloway prediction because he's the touchdown maestro. Oh, that's true. I, I spoke to you. Yeah, soon. I thought long and hard about this. Here, I'm going to die. Oh, oh no, what have I done? Yes. You're out, loser. <laughs> uh, Mike, are you going with me? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, the – oh. See, the no, thing you've, is – You've chose. What, um, I was, so let me throw this out. Going with Ride, I believe in my heart, is an opportunity to bet against Taysom Hill. Of which course. Which brings me great joy to do so, and it's been about 50-50 – but yeah, no, let's ride. Let's ride. Oh, you're let's gonna ride. ride. Yeah. You're gonna ride. Okay, get out I, of here, Taysom Hill. I think uh, I think the Raiders win this ball game. So uh, I was just looking through the the picks. I think I think New Orleans is only favored by like a point and a half or something. Uh, but I think the I think their offense is is got problems. Um, I'm going to change my. Uh, oh no, you're you're. I'm gonna ride. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with Andy. He's the touchdown guy. I'll die. Okay, that's All right. fine. That was that was very conniving, Jason. Uh, Kareem Hunt versus Cincinnati. What's the prediction here, Brooks? Can we just get him back to double digit opportunities, <laughs> guys? Oh, that's double a low digit bar. opportunities. He, he's had twelve combined over the last two weeks after averaging fourteen and a half over the first five weeks. No, I'm dying here. He's going to get traded. He doesn't need to be showcased. This is not like if you were if you were going to trade uh, Dearness Johnson, you'd showcase him. But if you're trading Kareem Hunt, people know what they're getting. If you're not planning on having him be a core part of your offense two weeks from now, why make him a core part today? That's my logic. Are we going big galaxy brain here of that the reason they haven't been giving him the ball the last couple of weeks is because they're trying to trade him and they don't want him to get hurt? I think it's I think it's that. And if they trade him, he's not part of the team. So why? I don't know. No, I, it does make sense. That's, that's a narrative-y approach that actually – Checks out now. Obviously, if a trade does not happen, then uh, you sound like a complete dummy. Um, <laughs> with the David and Joku injury and them needing more weapons in the offense, I think Kareem Hunt oh, will need okay. to be more involved. So I'm going to ride on this. All right, one. that's fair. The, it's been very bizarre. Of you had all bizarre. <laughs> Sorry, it's all right. You had five straight weeks with double digit just carries, and then you have the targets and everything to go along with that. And then the last two weeks. Four carries against the Patriots, five against the Baltimore Ravens. It is very strange to see the work just completely drop to nearly zero. I am pessimistic here. I'm going to say die. All right. So, uh, but I will add in. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, I'm, I'm adding it because I'm. I've been personally attacked here by Kareem Hunt. I've started him the last two weeks. So I. Whose that? mistake was that? I. What it was? He was getting double digit opportunities, and then he stopped getting them. So I'm upset. Yeah, all right. Maybe the first week, but the second week, you were you were still competent. I had no choice. Actually, all right. That was Ride or Die, presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Jordan Schultz reports that he talked to DK Metcalf, who wants to play this week, but according to Schultz, it'll be tough. I don't think he plays this week. You guys on the same page? Agreed. Yeah, that would that would blow my mind. When speaking about James Conner's week eight availability, Cliff Kingsbury once again said it'll be close. He's not played since week five. It, this is it, it's it's a little bit interesting because he was actually speaking about uh, a handful of players. Um, when asked, so I wasn't a hundred percent sure that he was referring to Connor or the other guys uh, in that quote, but the fact that he was a game time decision last week on a Thursday, I still believe that James Connor will will play this week. I am less uh, optimistic than you. I hope that's the case, but um, I believe he's half full guy. I believe he was a game time decision the week before that as well. At least that was what was being reported. Zeke will not practice today due to a knee injury, according to Mike McCarthy. Pretty expected. A contusion, we think. 
He, no, yeah, he thinks. Zeke thinks. So right. That's, what, that's the information that we were passed. It it was a nasty hit. It makes – he should not be practicing on a Wednesday regardless. Rumors the Broncos have been called about K.J. Hamler, Jerry Judy, Bradley Chubb. If they lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, in London, by the way, don't forget – Fantasy players. Hooray. We're out in London for the early morning game. And once again, Mike will be there at 3 a.m. Yep. Just set your alarm. I'll be here. Uh, so. Don't worry, guys. Russell Wilson was working out on a plane <laughs> Dude, on the flight. Okay. okay. Wait, yes. what is this? No, you, tell me about did this. Did you not see the quote? No, okay. I didn't see this. I shared. I, I put this in the Slack because it's just Russell Wilson. Is this a Wilson's, let's fly moment? He <laughs> continues to be ridiculous where it's it was an eight hour flight for them to get over to London. And Russell Wilson made sure that reporters knew that he spent four of the eight hours working out and stretching. And he was doing, you know, like high knees in the aisle while everybody else was sleeping. Russell Wilson still grinding. He said he was doing high knees in the aisle. Mm -hmm. Do you know how like, obnoxious that would be for those guys sleeping? <laughs> if we're if our entire team is flying overseas <laughs> and bro <laughs> Jason's in the aisle doing high knees. Just, high kick. You just hear his pants swishing. <laughs> oh, my God. Russ, just take a nap, brother. <laughs> like, it's okay. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I mean, the, Jerry, let's ride. <laughs> I get the stretching. If, you're a, if you have a hamstring injury, you probably don't want to be sitting in an airplane chair for eight hours. I understand. But it's like, why... Why do you have to make sure that people know this? Also, the pilot was Just, probably saying, can the guy doing the high <laughs> knees cool it? Uh, okay, the plane the, is shaking. Uh, the guy in the aisle. Uh, this is your captain speaking. Uh, it's a bit dangerous to do that. Um, wow. Okay. Every day. I feel yeah. like we're going to need a drop for Russell Wilson cringe news. Uh, Robert Sala, head coach of the Jets. They're going to take it slow with newly acquired James Robinson. So it's a Michael Carter starter week. Yeah. Yes, it is. And uh, Jameis Winston still not 100% healthy, according to very trusted, very uh, knowledgeable Nick Underhill of New Orleans dot football. And um, then play Andy Dalton. That's, I mean, yeah. Seems like that's what they're going to do. Yeah. yeah. The, the, you can stream Andy Dalton this week if he's the starter. All right, uh, Kyle Phillips on injured reserve. Not that you were playing him, and the 49ers let Tevin Coleman go after picking up Christian McCaffrey, which is a slight upgrade on Tevin Coleman. Just a little bit. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. All right, you guys want to do some sleepers? Let's go. Second Half Sleepers. That's pretty nice. I don't remember it. <laughs> you don't remember so making that? Like it's the first time. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to kick it off with Rashad Bateman, wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, one of the tools that we have on the website for the Foot Clan, uh, we have strength of schedule, stream finder tools. You can identify. I mean, look, we're, we're seven weeks into the season, and you can get a good gauge on what matchups are beneficial for various positions. And one of the things, and I, I think we briefly mentioned it about a week or two ago when Jason ended the show, he said, I want Rashad Bateman back from you, Andy. It was based on the fact that their schedule mm -hmm. for wide receivers is glorious down the stretch through basically week 8 through 17. Um, it's wonderful. They have the fourth best wide receiver schedule down the stretch. There's only one difficult matchup in week 13 against Denver. Everything else is a plus matchup. The team needs him desperately. Uh, you know, Lamar, he's got to get it going and he's not yeah. going to do it without Rashad Bateman. Yeah, it is worth mentioning. We're still monitoring his injury status, Rashad Bateman, where Ugh. we didn't see him practice yesterday. That could, you can't, it's, it's hard to go either way because of the Thursday night matchup. It makes injury reporting very difficult of guys just don't practice and you're freaked out in the Thursday. Like, no, I'm I'm going to play. Same thing for uh, uh, Mark Andrews, you know, not practicing. But uh, we expect Rashad Bateman to play this week. But I'm with Andy that if you can take advantage of the concern about the injury, the matchups are so juicy. The uh, the, the the 
the the ratio of the of the passing touchdowns to rushing touchdowns it's really flipped upside down the last couple of weeks. I expect that just balance out as it normally does. Just you know, statistically speaking, for these teams, so Bateman is in play as a cheaper wide receiver that you should be able to to acquire and stash. Yeah, I think that that's just a good high upside number. I mean, Lamar's come out and talked about him as the number one. He is that guy for them, and he needs to step into that role. So I think as a second half sleeper, he's a good option for your team. He's one of the more like on the explosive side. Certainly, if for you that. have a balance of you know maybe a possession receiver as your other wide receiver. Yeah, he's got one of the fastest clocked times this year. He's very explosive for an explosive offense. I'm going to go uh, with a, a sleeper wide receiver like you. Uh, but unlike yours, who has been injured and not able to participate, and that's why he's been asleep, my guy's been out there. He's been out there. You just didn't I, this know This is it. breaking news to me. I did not know you had made this uh, difficult decision. Yeah, but I think that uh, DJ Moore at this point in time is a sleeper, not just because he's asleep, but because he might wake up. Uh, we have one game without Christian McCaffrey. He had 10 targets, was very involved in the offense, 7 for 70, got the touchdown. And there's, you know, we know that DJ Moore is talented. We've questioned everything about him this year uh, because of his struggles, because of the offense. But he's got the fifth most targets and receiving yards for a wide receiver before turning 25 in NFL history. He's not a bad wide receiver. He's the number one guy. He is on the team, and that's, you know, those are the things you can say. <laughs> on the team? You know, go. He's on the team. Go team. Go football. That was one of the two bullet points you gave us was he, he is on the roster. Yeah, you've got Robbie Anderson um, is not on the team. Christian McCaffrey is not on the team. DJ Moore is the leftovers while the team is going to be bad. They've he is going to get a ton of targets. And here's the – here's you want a fact. You want to like, oh, here's all this. You could say he's on the team and great th thoughts like that. Um, but if you want an actual fact that will prove that he will be good the second half of the year, we have to go into next year questioning if DJ Moore is a good pick. And there will be people excited because every single year you're excited about DJ Moore when maybe you shouldn't be. And if he sucks the rest of the year – there's no way we go into next year actually going, no, DJ Moore's so good. Which so is a necessity for an offseason. That's exactly right. Uh, mm. The team did come out and say he, they're not trading him. They said that he is uh, one of a handful of kind of foundational players on the roster moving forward. So you are, the, uh, you are going to go through some quarterback changes. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be Baker, Darnold, somebody else at some point here, right? Yeah, for sure. He will have at least three quarterbacks by the end of the year from this point forward. Also, I play I against him in our league of records, so you know you he's know going off this that, week. I think he's um I think they win this week again in their two and zero without McCaffrey. Oh wow. All right, Mike, who do you have as your second half sleeper pick? All right, this one is a deep sleeper because finding a running back of any sort of value at this point of the season is you gotta you got to go into the mine and just – you. hopefully you have some sort of head torch that you can see what you're doing. But Kyron Williams of the Los Angeles Rams, I think, is someone that you should pick up and you should stash. The reasons for this, number one, look at what has happened with Cam Akers. Like, the guy we, – we don't know exactly what has happened, but there is some sort of personal conflict with, with Cam and with the team. And he was benched last week. They're going to bench him again this week. They've already said openly, we are trying to trade Cam Akers. He is no longer a part of the the future for this team. And then combine that information with back right before week one, we were starting to get reports. I wish we would have had him you know, earlier in the offseason, but we were getting reports right before the game that look out for Kyron Williams. He is going to be far more involved than everybody else thought in the NFL. And it's not completely unusual for us to get these reports like right before the game happens. It's, it does happen. But Kyron Williams got hurt on, I think, the very first play, the, the, on the special teams play of the game, and he had to go to IR and had some surgery, so he, just, he wasn't available. He's still not healthy. He's still not ready to go, which means you could pick him up for probably a, a no-priority burn, a $0 fab bid. Just put him in your IR and wait. 
The schedule opens up for the Rams running backs starting in week 11 or so. And by then, he could be the starting running back for the Rams. It is in the range of outcomes. He is the reason why they wouldn't trade for Kareem Hunt. If they had confidence in Kyron Williams right. offering them enough and the price for Kareem Hunt was so high, I mean, they're the team that stands out as the place that Hunt should go. But if it doesn't happen, it has to be because they believe in Kyron. I agree Because you can't go into a potential defense of your Super Bowl championship with Daryl Henderson dot, dot, dot. Like, right. that's not enough. He's been hurt Him, too much. Malcolm Brown. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the, Rams are, the Rams are going to do something to address the running back position, whether that's trade for Kareem Hunt or Kyron Williams is, is, comes back and he gets a bunch of work. All right, quick break and back with three more second-half sleepers. All right, we are back with three more sleepers for the second half of the season. And again, this is these are players that have the opportunity to emerge that aren't yet fixtures in your fantasy lineup. And two of them have the same name. That's right, our next two. Khalil Herbert is my selection for a second half sleeper. I have been a big Montgomery believer. You have. Over time. Now, the one thing that I think would get in the way of the Khalil Herbert success in the second half of the year would be more success for the Bears than I'm expecting. If they're winning more ball games, I think you have more incentive to get Montgomery out there, even though he's going to be a free agent. However, this team has said they're going to ride the hot hand. They seem to be alternating drives in this past game, and they have a juicy second-half schedule against the run. It's the third easiest in all of football. So I think Khalil Herbert, you know, has a real opportunity. He's a good running back. And if the team wants to see what they have as they turn the page on David Montgomery and he goes to free agency, this is going to be the time. And so as this, if this team's eliminated from playoff contention, I think you could see even more of Khalil Herbert and it could put him into a category of a flex-worthy play and obviously much better if Monty goes down. He's also super good. He's, yes, he is. Like, you just watch him play and you're like, man, that... That guy's he does not go down on contact. He yeah. has four top 24 finishes. That is more than Zeke, more than Kareem Hunt, and more than Najee Harris with the current touches he's getting. I, I found it funny when building our uh, DraftKings lineup and looking that Khalil Herbert is, is pricier than Najee Harris. Wow. And also because he averages more fantasy points yeah. this year as the backup to the Bears than Najee does as the starter. So looking at David Montgomery's running back attempt percentage, so you know the percent of the running back carries that go to David Montgomery, this past week against the Patriots, he was at 50%, which is looks like the lowest percent of the running back carries since his rookie year in a non-injury game. So a coach told the truth? Is it, that what you're saying? I'm saying it. He, they said it, and... We had a lower amount of work for Montgomery. It's only one week. It we, could shift back, but it like I, I think that Herbert could take over this job. Would you use this last week, which was a good one for David Montgomery, with the touchdown? Right. Would you use it? Would you, do you think you should move him? Because that that third easiest run schedule applies to Montgomery as well. But I, do you think that there, there's a time to move away from him if you can get equal value in a role that you know is more secure? Like, would you trade him for Ezekiel Elliott? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think that I would. It's, it's I love Zeke. I love the battle plan, but Montgomery. I don't. He's not a player that will be have no fantasy value. I just. I. I think that the timeshare continues to grow. It's possible that Herbert even takes over the timeshare, but Montgomery will still have value. So if you're trading him. It has to be for a running back with a more secure volume opportunity. Yeah, you'll probably need to package him with someone else to trade up at the running back which, position. Which Zeke doesn't have. I mean, Zeke's in his own timeshare. Right, and you could probably put Monty together with somebody after this past week and maybe Possible, yeah. maybe upgrade a little bit to... I could do. Would you rather have Raheem Mostert or Montgomery? Oh, wow. That's a great question. I think Raheem Mostert will be better than Montgomery in games played. I'm still I, – I would rather have Montgomery, the younger, healthier history, 
uh, running back, okay. but you know that that's tough. If you could package trade him up for Travis Etienne right now, I mean you probably can't. But let me yeah. let me uh, hand you the baton, Jason. I need you to pick a second F sleeper, but here's the rules. Okay. Same first name as Khalil Herbert. Right. Well, then I will go with Khalil Shakir. Oh, uh, Khalil Shakir, very wide receiver, bold. rookie for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, we have seen over the years, in fact, we saw this the last week of football where sometimes you go into a bye week and you have the rookie bye week bump. They, the, These teams finally get a, t a chance yeah. to have uh, practice time where it's not just on the schedule of focusing on the next game and they can incorporate rookies in. So we saw that with Isaiah Pacheco where he just became the first man up in the rotation for the uh, for the Chiefs, Khalil Shakir um, has an opportunity here to come out and take over the job that Isaiah McKenzie sucked at last week. Uh, the job that Isaiah McKenzie, when he was missing a, a couple weeks ago, Shakir stepped into that role, was 75 yards and a touchdown the role that Cole Beasley dominated and had great fantasy success with on the best offense in football, Shakir has looked really talented in a very limited basis. His He's hips don't lie. Hey -oh. Oh, don't lie. I'm <laughs> on the food. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Shakira, okay. Shakira. Uh, we will get a Shakira drop, don't worry, if Khalil Shakir becomes a thing. He's available on most all waivers right now. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> And my expectation is simply that if he comes uh, out of the bye and has a 50-50 time split with Isaiah McKenzie, that is enough for me to believe that as the year goes on, he'll take over the role. All right. And you apparently put your money where your mouth was. You just picked him up off of waivers? Oh, did I? Yay. I haven't seen how they ran. I mean, when you have Dobbs or yeah. <laughs> Blank, <laughs> yeah. a lot of good options. Um, Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> okay. Mike is not a fan. All right. Who do you got, Mike? I'm going with the rookie tight end, Greg Dulcich, where you had the his first ever game, came out, scores the long touchdown. It was a broken defensive play, but looked good, was out there running a, a decent amount of routes, and it was, all right, the rookie tight end on a really bad offense. Let's wait and see what happens. And the next week, Greg D ran 34 routes. He was targeted on nine of them. That is a 26% targets per route run. 34 routes. Gerald Everett last week ran 33 routes. Hayden Hurst ran 33. Ingram ran 33. Like those, you want to see your tight end out there with just the a chance of getting a target. So you want those high routes. And then that turning into the nine targets was, I mean, that's a fantastic number of a rookie tight end Top 12 in both of them. What is what is the identity of this Denver Broncos team? Like, Well, it could be an identity without two of their wide receivers at the trade deadline. It certainly could, but I'm saying even with them on the team, we don't. the Broncos don't know who they are yet. Where it's It seems like Cortland Sutton is pretty secure as the number one wide receiver, but after that, Jerry Judy with Russell Wilson, it, it hasn't been fantastic. Judy got a, a decent amount of targets here from the backup quarterback. Russ was stretching it out on the plane. He's going to come back. What does that turn into? And I think that the tight end position is so up in the air of it's Andrews, it's Travis Kelsey. Those are the only two. Lock Maybe George Kittle might be working his way back into George Kittle looks good. Fully locked in as an every week start. But, but Greg as, D. As you're moving towards your playoff run and you're trying to find the answer for the tight end position, his schedule is very juicy coming up here after the bye week. You know, the run from weeks 10 through 17, only two difficult matchups. The hardest part for for Greg D is the fact that this isn't the best matchup this week, and then he goes on bye. So it's what are you willing to stash the rookie uh, through that bye week and hold on, hold on to two tight ends? And I'm starting to get to the point where I think I would do that. This is a very... Good synopsis for this uh, second half sleeper, Mike. I have a, a follow up announcement I'd like to make to the okay to the Foot Clan. Oh, whoa, we're going. Can, with I go, the can we go to my camera, please? Thank you. Foot Clan. Yeah. Big news. I just picked up Greg D. 
Oh no! And oh I'm, no! I'm playing him over yeah. Kyle. I'm yeah. playing him over Kyle Pitts. I'm playing him over Kyle. I'm putting Pitts on the bench so you can guarantee a touchdown for him. No, no, you are putting Pitts on the bench so you can get points from the tight end position. Congratulations, man. What do you think? Oh, I know it's going to backfire, <laughs> and I'm so excited. I can't wait. I did it, though. I mean, that's that's what I did. I did that. Yes. Love you love to see it. <sighs> it's hard. It's man, hard. I love chaos. Greg Dulcich. Let's go. I want – here's what I want from the tight end position. I don't care how athletic you are. I need you to – Run routes and get targets. I need that to be part of your repertoire. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I mean, the numbers that Kyle Pitts would put up in an offense that used the tight end position, it would be mesmerizing. But he isn't on that team, right? Right. That is correct. So uh, they play Carolina this week, and I'm going to try Dulcich out with uh, high knees Russell Wilson and see what happens in London. Man, that, I'm so sad. Uh, all right, we, uh, we're through the second half sleepers, unless there's anybody else you guys want to mention. Nope. Thursday Night Breakdown. Let me throw it to the deucers for a second here. Brooksy, you, uh, you approve this move? Oh, yeah. The Greg D? Yes, sir. Mm. All right. 100%. Is it because he already has like a higher week than Kyle Pitts has all year long? <laughs> yeah, and you just you got to stop hurting yourself. Thank you, Brooks. You care for me. The Baltimore Ravens at four and three take on the three and four Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Ravens minus one and a half. The over under is forty five. And uh, you know Tampa, they've lost four or five games. It's been uh, it's been rough. Baltimore, they try to lose all their games in the fourth, but uh, occasionally they win. So, you know, Mike, you have Lamar Jackson on your team. Yeah. You've got Tom Brady on a dynasty roster. What's the temperature here with Lamar? Is this a, um, a blip in his storyline for this year, these past few weeks where he struggled? Uh, I, I think so because the, those first few weeks, as great as they were and as, you know, you want to – proclaim well I drafted Lamar Jackson and this is what is going to happen every single week it was it was not sustainable what was happening but the bigger concern for the Broncos or not the Broncos the Ravens has been the offense is as in, in totality the offense is just not putting up the points that they were putting up over the first couple of weeks the the Bucks are down pretty bad right now when it comes to injuries uh we have you know a r report here saying that they could be down four of their defensive backs this particular week, which is that's great news for Lamar Jackson. If we can get Rashad Bateman on the field and a, a health, healthier Mark Andrews after the debacle of last week. But I do think that it was a blip and the first few weeks were way too good. Last couple, the last month has been way too bad and we should balance out here and just get some good old fashioned solid Lamar top 10 on the week, top five upside. Yeah, the uh, the Buccaneers are hurting in their secondary. It's been it's been rough. They are at home in this game. On the other side, what is your confidence level with Brady's struggles for Mike Evans and Chris Godwin? We just found out Russell Gage is out. It's been ruled out of this game, and Julio Jones. You might as well just call him a game time decision sure. for all games. GTD, except yeah. we know it's what the decision he is won't be. play. That's right. So, I mean, where where are you with Godwin and Evans' rest of season in terms of the hierarchy? I I, I think they're absolutely f f great plays yes. all season long, um, both of them. As far as hierarchy goes, you've got more consistency in Godwin and a higher um, individual outcome games from Mike Evans, which is pretty much what we've seen for years. Brady and this offense need to – get it going a little bit better, and really it's a matter of touchdowns, right? That's where they've been struggling. They've moved the ball. They've been playing okay, but they just have not been able to punch it in and score touchdowns. When when you're looking at Tom Brady and you're saying, okay, this is a guy who, what did he throw, 40-something touchdowns last year? And now you look at his passing touchdowns, 
He has two passing touchdowns in the last three weeks combined. That is... He's had one touchdown in every game except for one this year. One or, or sorry, one or, f or fewer in every single game except for one. Yeah, I mean, it is, um, it's, it's an enigma. So you have to ask, is. you know, is, is something broken that can't be fixed? I don't, I it's don't, possible. It, it is possible. Um, just because of age, just because, you know, I'm sure we had these conversations about Manning in right? that final yeah, year. Uh, now, I don't think but, he looks that way. See, he doesn't look. The, that's the difference. When Manning was bad. It was noodle arm. Oh, my goodness. You yeah. watch and you go, wow, this guy sucks. He was leading the league in interceptions. He, I mean, the ball just came out of his hand different than you've ever seen it. You, when you watch Brady play this year, he looks great. He's rifling balls right into tight windows and deep shots. Everything looks good. The, the completion around the end zone just isn't happening Based on the film that I've seen, I will bet that they do figure it out, that they do get touchdowns. Uh, Godwin and Evans are going to be great. Brady should be fine. It's a scary play right now because of what's happened over the last few weeks, but I'd still start him over, uh, you know, the... Well, it's a tough week for quarterbacks anyway. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, but, you know, Daniel Jones, a big waiver wire pickup. Right. Like, that would be the question. He had such a good week last week. Would you go Daniel Jones or Tom Brady? I would still stick with Tom Brady. The Ravens are currently 22nd against quarterbacks for schedule adjusted fantasy points, 19th against wide receivers. I mean, this is a this is a plus matchup for the Bucks passing attack. And the nice thing is, the Ravens should be able to score. Should, yeah. Because all of the Bucks secondary are kaput. They are gone. They they have such good they they have one of the best if not like the best secondary in the league except not this week because all those great players they gone what are you guys doing with the Gus bus this week you know likely the the number one waiver pickup in your league he's not and a must play now uh, yeah I okay so you're with the not must play but last week he's not a must bus last week this Buccaneers defense got annihilated by the likes of Chuba Hubbard and Deontay Foreman and and that Carolina Panthers offense. This is true. <laughs> Which was embarrassing and completely like there's no way you could have seen that coming. Is there's is there a a problem here? Well that, let's let's put it the to Bucks the test. Defense, let's put okay? it to the test, Mike, because that's all we're talking about here. He's not a must start, but last week you'd you'd love to get that from Gus. Would you play him? Or Daryl Henderson this week against San Francisco. I would play Gus Edwards. Mike or uh, Jason? Oh man, that's that is really where the line is. I lean Henderson because of receptions. What about uh, the Gus Bus or Brian Robinson this I would, week? I would go Brian Robinson. I would go Gus Edwards. Okay, so we've got we've got some Gus trust on the other side of the table from me. Yes. Um. Rashad Bateman, we have no updates. I know we've been trying to get an update from practice, but we're watching. Look, Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman did not practice yesterday. Correct. So I'm hoping it's a rest day. We haven't heard anything about a setback. I think that's what we're all worried about with Rashad Bateman in the foot. Nothing happened on the field that was a noticeable setback. He played the game, played his normal allotment of snaps. And so I would imagine because he's been struggling with this injury and they're on a short week, it, it, it if makes that's more not, sense for yeah. him to not practice than for him to practice. And if there's any news that doesn't align with that theory, Jason, I choose to reject it. Oh, absolutely. Nice. Confirm your biases, Foot Clan. That's yeah. right. Yep, that's that's the that's the case. Mark Andrews, disappointing week last week. Right now you are, you know, you're hoping he's not, that wasn't an injury-related thing that persists. Um, the, the Buccaneers are bottom half against tight ends. The the one glimmer of hope from the box score for Mark Andrews of being okay with the injury is you, you goose egg in the passing game. They gave him a carry, though. And it seems like if your superstar player is actually injured, you wouldn't do that. Okay, that's, Lamar, that's Jackson, a thought. Lamar Jackson talked about it and said that, they, it, that it was just great defense where they were bracketing him and uh, just really – took him out they sold out to take Mark Andrews away 
The Tampa Bay Buccaneers can do anything they want to do with the injuries they have in their secondary. They cannot scheme out Mark Andrews. So I, I think Mark Andrews is, you know, he he's my number one tight end this week. I'm not worried at all from last week. Okay. All right. That's fair. Um, otherwise, Leonard Fournette on the other side. You still play him. Okay. You, you do keep an eye on the splits, though, because – Seems like every week, you know, at the beginning of the year, it was like 100% Leonard Fournette. Sure. Now Rashad White has involved himself more and more, more carries, more targets, more snaps. And so by the end of the year, I don't know, you might be you might be seeing this in a full-blown committee. Well, I'm looking forward to the Thursday night game. If you want to see all of our rankings, use the Start Sit tool, make those decisions. Uh, for your roster, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's do a little bit of mailbag. <clears throat> Bag. Bag. Yeah. It's very sad in many leagues over the last two days. I have seen the departure of Brees Hall from rosters. Yeah. It's been a painful thing to watch. Goodbye, Jason Sweet Prince. Uh, Hayden in Ohio says, how do you feel about accepting trade offers immediately after a player is injured? <laughs> I proposed a trade of Kittle and Michael Carter for Brees Hall they ignored it, and then they accepted it as soon as Hall tore his ACL. No. Been playing for about eight years. I've never had an opponent pull something as shady as that. No, that is 100% Bush. If it is a full-on injury uh, where that player is not, re not relevant anymore, you cannot accept a trade like that. Yeah. That is a platform mistake. You know, I we've we've been we talking, have in talked the about this yeah. in the office. We've been talking about like we and and we'll talk to Sleeper and and um, they've they've hey, made a lot Sleeper. Of, they've made a lot of change. Yeah, you're probably listening. Um, where we feel like trade offers that go out that have players in the trade offers when those players' games hit, those trades should automatically uh, you know dissolve be, yeah. or be locked. Like if the player is locked. You know, like as soon as kickoff happens, that player. The system locks them wherever they are on your bench or in the starting roster. Lock the trade. Well, I think I think you know there are times when, when you want to set a trade offer up and and you say okay, accept it after the weekend, whatever. But a little checkbox that says expire on Sunday, right? That would fix the whole problem. It, regardless, don't be a don't be a jerk. No, don't be a don't be one of those guys or yes. gals. Just, just have respect for the game. Understand that, look, if, if the player wouldn't trade George Kittle and Michael Carter for an injured Brees Hall, then don't you don't accept the offer. You don't get sneaky with it. Yes. That ruins everything. That's not the trade they meant to make. Yep. Don't totally be agreement. a dummy. And, and to try to prevent it because it shouldn't happen, but just you know, be a little bit smart about it. Sunday, before, part of your checklist when you're making sure your rosters are good to go, Make sure that your trades are pulled out yeah, before fair. the game starts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, ballers. This comes in from Sprinkles of Joy in California. Is that a real place? Um, no, no, no. That's a real name. That's their, I think, their name on Patreon, maybe. Oh, okay. That's what they put their name in as, Sprinkles okay. of Joy, which sounds... Gotcha. Uh, sounds very happy. Delicious. Uh, I'm in need of wide receivers, but I have a good handful of running backs. Would you trade Damian Pierce for DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah, PPR League, if you have a bunch of running backs, Hopkins is going to be... Very steady with touchdown upside every week. Yep. He looks the same. Yeah, his baseline feels like eight receptions. Yeah, so uh, for sure. Glenn in Virginia, would you try to target, or who would you try to target if you're trading away Aaron Jones? Always a difficult question to say yeah. who you'd target. First thing I would do is go look at at the league as a whole, You know where you could see everybody's rosters, and look for teams that are hurting at running back. That's... That's where you start. Yep. It's not a matter of finding like the player that you want. And I just I love Chris Godwin. I got to go have Chris Godwin. Well, if if the Chris Godwin team has no wide receivers and great running backs, you're not gonna you're not gonna find that trade. So you need to uh, target teams, not players. I agree. That's a good point. Would you trade Aaron Jones out of curiosity for Damian Pierce? Would you rather have Damian Pierce? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Uh, and then Patrick in Canada. Feeling helpless, says uh, oh, Ballers. No. Bonjour, Patrick. Yeah. Let's help you. Ballers, how do you stay motivated to compete when you have uh, been absolutely derailed with injuries? I've lost <clears throat> Javante, Ooh. Cordero, Sorry. Penny, Yikes. and now Brees. That's too much. <laughs> I had hope that I, uh, and still a chance with Brees, but now I feel like there is no way to compete or win. Um, 
I I will say that uh, good luck. <laughs> the, the, the reality say, is Cordero is targeting next week to come back. I was going to mention it earlier in the week. I think Cordero Patterson. I might I'd throw out a kind of a low ball offer right now to go get Patterson. The not that I'm fully confident that when he comes back he's good to go and he's just it's back to those first couple weeks because you still have the the complete unknown of Damian Williams coming back eventually. We don't know when that will be. But what we do know is Arthur's testosterone can't even be measured by doctors because it, it you know the like in the cartoons when the oh the yeah when fashion it, thermometer yeah and, when it bursts off the top yeah, that's his levels of t mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to him if he's down three touchdowns he's going to establish the run they have to use a dot matrix printer <laughs> in order to fill it up with enough digits so I think that Patterson's not the worst player to target right now yeah and and I will say this Patrick in Canada. I, I won a championship a couple of years ago where oh, I, I lost. Cool. I no, lost this, this is a good no, I, I, I lost just about everybody on my roster uh, to injury. And I had the magic touch and luck of, of matchups and somehow snuck in the playoffs. And my team stunk. I mean, I shouldn't have. I didn't belong there. I should have lost every matchup. What and league was this? That was Dynasty? The, that was the Listener League. Oh yes, yeah. that was uh, so you got to the that was year. the Brian Ketron year yes. when his dominant team lost to my hodgepodge group of misfits, and I got the championship, and he was the biggest loser of all time. I mean, so uh, just keep going, Patrick. You never know. Last year, I lost the championship because I didn't choose to play Jarrett Patterson or Boston Scott. So there are players like Jason saying that. You, It'll pop you, up. Yeah, that's why you listen. That's why you try to uh, pick up some of these second half sleepers, because you know you lost Brees. But who's to say that the powerhouse team in your league doesn't lose a player or two? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, this is not the un unfortunately this is not the end of the injuries. They didn't end because they were bad last week. We've had enough. Everyone is immune. Yeah, D Damian Williams was a playoff superstar a few years ago. Oh, that was great for the um, Chiefs. You know, Amon Ra hadn't even done anything at this point in the year last year. Oh, yeah, True. he was cut from team to team to team to team to yep. team in our league last year. We were looking up Andy's roster, and it was like week eight. It was like, oh, you had Amon Ra? I was like, well, for a week, and then he cut him. And then, it's just like the, right. there, there are players who are going to win championships that you might not even know their name right now. Yeah, this is with, – with this type of team, you need to fully embrace high-variance players – like it, we were talking about before the show of a second half sleeper, and like I've been just dying to make to get on here, and be like, go get Sky Moore. Now is the time to pick up Sky Moore, rookie wide receiver from the Kansas City Chiefs. And every time you you think you're about to get in on this player, he fumbles, <laughs> and then he has negative fantasy points. And all three starting wide receivers for the Chiefs have big games, but it's players like that where. If the path just happens to align right, Sky Moore over the second half of the season, he can still be a or difference Chris, maker. Christian Watson, like what happens sure. if he earns the trust 100%. of Rodgers because no one else is there to do it? And Traylon Burks, three yeah, great, three. talented rookie wide receivers who have not done anything yet. Those are guys you need to start picking up and rostering. Yeah, he's going to come back at some point, right? Yeah, uh, he's got one more week of ineligibility uh, for the IR, and then he—I don't know the status of his actual injury progress because when people are on these uh, different injury reports, they don't have to be discussed at all by the team, so you're usually left in the dark. All right, Spotify Live today, the party room, yeah, three, baby. P three p.m. Pacific, six p.m. Eastern. So you can grab the Spotify Live app or the Spotify app. Tune in this afternoon; it's always a good time. Tomorrow we'll be back with Never Not Working. Matchup preview starts of the week. And, of course, Jason's Boom Boom Kicker. So do not miss it. Check out our fantasy football community. Support the show at jointhefoot.com. Until next time, gentlemen, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.